Good morning. I am Renu Sharma, Assistant Professor, EC Department. Today, I am going to start with the next topic for Unit 5 and the topic of today's lecture is WLL. In short, it is known as uh, wireless local loop. So, the, uh, in short, it is known as WLL and second one is UMTS. So, these two topics we are going to discuss in today's lecture. So, what is WLL? Now, in a telephone network, a WLL is a generic term for an access system that uses a wireless link to connect subscriber to the local telephone station in place of conventional copper wire. So, in case of uh, mobile communication, when we want uh, the connection to be set up for the purpose of voice signal transmission and reception, in that case, uh, earlier, uh, landline phones are used and these landline phones are connected through twisted pair cable. But uh, since uh, twisted pair cable has their own disadvantages like uh, it will cover a very less distance, so co copper wires are used. Now, since uh, all the things are going to be in the uh, in the form of wireless, so in wireless local loop when telephones are connected for the purpose of uh, transmission of uh, voice signals. Uh, then it is known as wireless local loop. So, in fixed wireless uh, access system, the wireless local loop is popular, WLL is called as fixed wireless loop. So, wireless means there is no uh, connection, physical connection set up, uh, a wire uh, will not be set up between the transmitter and receiver. Local loop means for a very small area when it is used for uh, connecting the tra telephone for the purpose of communication, then that is known as wireless local loop and that is also uh, considered as fixed wireless loop. So, that uh, let us say 5 uh, different phones are connected for in, in this particular loop, then another additional uh, system cannot be added. So, that is fixed in nature. So, the function of WLL is to make primary access to telephone uh, station using wireless link. Now, in the uh, WLL system, there are two concepts uh, which are used like first concept which are which is used is narrow band WLL, second one is broadband WLL. So, in case of this narrow band WLL, it offers a replacement for existing telephony services. Narrow band means the bandwidth that is used for the purpose of transmission, which means the number of carriers uh, are very less as compared to the broadband WLL. So, in narrow band, number of uh, users are less for the purpose of communication and that will uh, going to replace the existing telephony service uh, services which is based on uh, copper wires. Then broadband WLL is there which provides high speed two way voice and data services. So, that is the case for broadband WLL where high speed data uh, will be uh, transmitted uh, and it, it offers two way communication which means it will transmit at the same time it can receive also so that is a case for uh, full duplex communication. Now, WLL can handle high data traffic in local loop system. So, it, it will going to uh, handle the high data uh, rate. So, how it will work? So, this question comes into mind that how these uh, systems are connected, how this uh, access to landline phones is there possible with the use of WLL. So, WLL which stands for wireless local loop connects subscriber to the PSTN using radio signals as a substitute for copper for all uh, or part of the connection between the subscriber and the switch. So, basically in case of this WLL, it is uh, used as a standard uh, stands for wireless local loop. So, that will going to connect uh, the subscriber to the public switched telephone network that is a kind of landline phone uh, only. So, using the radio links as a substitute for co uh, copper wire. WLL phones in homes, offices or even boats connect uh, with a wireless system in a manner similar to the CDMA cell phones. So, GSM, CDMA all this belongs to second generation of uh, communication. In this case, in this uh, second generation, the data rate that is used for the transmission is very less as compared to the data rate uh, which is being uh, offered by 4G and uh, to be uh, which is proposed that 5G also. So, uh, this is used uh, in 
in case of this WLL, it will going to connect different uh, phones in like homes, offices or a, in very small area with the on the concept that is based on CDMA code division multiple access. In case of CDMA, if you remember that different codes are generated which are uh, generated using this Walsh tables. So, whatever data you want to transmit, uh, Walsh codes uh, will be used to generate the data, uh, coded data uh, in case of the CDMA system. Now, this is a general WLL setup. Now, you can see in this diagram that this is a telephone uh, central office. Then there is a satellite uplink uh, is there and to this there is a local network switch that is denoted by this PBX or PST. And so, uh, this local uh, switch is nothing. It is a uh, network switch is nothing. It is just your landline phone that is PST and public switch telephone network. To this, it is connected to the telephone central office. Now, to this, uh, we are going to connect the radio based repeater that is also known as RS hub. Now, what is the work of this hub? Hub is basically a system that will uh, act as a mediator between the transmitter and receiver. It will going to combine the signal from many of the transmitters and then it will going to uh, do some uh, kind of processing on that signal and then it will uh, going to repeat the uh, same signal to uh, more than one receiver. There may be one receiver, there, there may be more than one receiver is there. So, that is the work of this radio based repeater. Now, you can see in uh, this diagram that from this radio based repeater, this uh, through this wireless local loop, this is the residential area uh, to which these uh, signals will be broadcasted and it also, it is also uh, broadcasted to this uh, typical subscriber location where telephone, modem and fax machine, these are connected. So, you can see that in this wireless local loop, the area uh, which is covered uh, for the purpose of uh, to provide the service of uh, telephone uh, system. Uh, it is very small, but not as small as uh, it is possible with uh, the landline phones. It is possible with this WLL. So, it is wireless local loop. So, the signals will be broadcasted and it will be received by different transmitters and receivers. Now, next one is the configuration of the WLL. So, this is a mobile switching center. You can also write uh, it as mobile switching center or MSC. To this mobile switching center which is responsible for uh, communication with uh, which is responsible for uh, accessing the BSC that is the base transceiver station and B, uh, base, uh, uh, base station controller. It will going to control uh, the operation of BSC more than one BSC is connected to one MSC that is the main uh, logic behind uh, GSM model which I have discussed earlier uh, in the earlier class. So, this uh, mobile switching center is connected through this wire, uh, wire link to this base station antenna where different uh, antennas are installed so that it will going to provide the wireless communication to this residential area either the office or the government agency. So, this is just an example you can extend to a uh, large number of uh, uh, receivers also or more than uh, or a single receiver also. So, this is the conf configuration of the WLL. So, from this diagram it is clear that the base station antenna is controlled by the switching center that is mobile switching center or main switching center uh, through wired link and here wireless connections are uh, set up. Next one is the access technology. So, uh, there are different types of access technology are used like FDMA where the available frequency band now, first we will discuss what is access technology. Access means multiple access we are discussing which means that more than one transmitters like this is transmitter 1, this is transmitter 2, this is transmitter 3. So, these three transmitters will going to uh, access a single channel over here. This is the channel, this is a single channel. So, more than one uh, transmitter will going to connect to this uh, single channel. So, this is the concept behind this uh, multiple access technique which means that more than one user are going to access a channel based on frequency division, based on code division, based on time division. What do you mean by frequency division? 
Frequency division means the available bandwidth of the channel has to be equally divided among n number of users. So, uh, which means that signal bandwidth should always be less than channel bandwidth. So, this is the main aim of uh, setting up a uh, network. Whenever this uh, signal bandwidth greater than channel bandwidth, now in that case in that particular case what will happen the, uh, the information that you want to transmit or you want to access through this channel will get lost. So, that is the uh, concept behind this FDMA that is the frequency division multiple access. Now, next one is code division multiple access. In this case, uh, whatever data you want to transmit in the form of ones and zeros, it has to be coded with the use of Walsh codes or Walsh table. So, that is the concept behind the CDMA. Next one is TDMA that is time division multiple access where the total time uh, which is been available for the purpose of transmission is equally divided among n number of transmitters or n number of users. So, that is the case for transmitter. Now, next is the one being used in India is CDMA basically. So, uh, CDMA technique is used mostly for the purpose of WLL. Next is features of uh, uh, WLL. It uh, provide better quality of service. So, better QoS will be provided compatible with other cellular technologies uh, and then it has scalability. So, that is the, these are some of the features that is related to WLL. Now, next is advantages of WLL. The cost of wire equipment is less because uh, wireless equipment is less because uh, when you want to install uh, the wire, uh, wired communic uh, wired uh, connection between transmitter and receiver. So, it's maintenance, uh, it requires maintenance first thing. Secondly, it requires uh, engineers to install the wire uh, between the transmitter and receiver and it has limited uh, uh, connectivity it has limited coverage it will going to provide but in case of this wireless equipment its cost is very less it uh, it can cover larger distance as compared to the wired connection and uh, it ha it uh, it is easy easy to install they have good scale of installation which means more number of users can connect uh, through this wll now, next topic of today's lecture is uh, umts that is universal mobile telecommunication system now, what is UMTS? UMTS is developed by 3GPP that is third generation partnership project. Now, this 3GPP uh, came after 3G uh, that is the third generation. Uh, it is a joint venture of several organizations. Now, 3G UMTS is a third generation system. Uh, it uh, It supposed this broadband transmission packet based transmission of text will be there, digitized voice, video, multimedia uh, which is transmitted at the rate of 2 uh, megabits per second. So, that is the data rate that has been uh, used by this multimedia system. So, whatever data that you want to transmit or want to receive in case of multimedia, it can support up to 2 megabits uh, per second. Secondly, it will going to support this video transmission, digitized voice uh, will be there. It is based on transmission of text also. Now, WCDMA is also uh, possible with this uh, UMTS that is wideband uh, code division multiple access. Computer and phone users can be constantly attached to internet wherever they travel and they roam will have the same set of capabilities which means that whether I am residing in a single cell uh, in the parent cell or I am going to visit to another location where the roaming uh, is there. So, in that case the connectivity will be maintained. Uh, with the use of this UMTS. Now, you can see in this diagram that this is the core network and this is connected to the public network that is PSTN, ISTN, PSDN that is public switch telephone network ISTN which means that whatever core network you have designed uh, on the basis of this UMTS, it will provide the services to this external uh, system and there are different uh, systems are there like RNS 
uh, these are connected to this one and these are nothing these are the mobile phones like the mobile stations are there so that is the basic diagram of umts now next is what is the purpose of umts why we are going to study this uh, umts so 2g and 2.5g now 2.5g is also known as edge system are incompatible around the world worldwide devices need to have multiple technologies inside of them uh, that is tri band phones dual mode phones so when you uh, visit to another location this 2g and 2.5g is not capable of providing services around the world so we have to design some system that will provide the connectivity around the world when you roam from one place to another place so this requires the designing of this umts possible to develop a single standard that would be accepted around the world one device should be able to work anywhere it has increased data rate uh, which is maximum to 204 at kbps that is 2.048 uh, 2.048 megabits per second so that is the main reason why uh, we have switched to this umts because it will provide uh, compatibility with the other devices and it provide connection uh, throughout the world wherever you roam uh, UMTS modes are there like there are two different types of modes of operation first one is UMTS FDD that is frequency division duplex second one is UMTS TDD that is time division duplexing now in this diagram you can see that this is FDD and this is TDD in this case time division duplexing there is a mobile terminal and a base station is there now you can see that there is uplink and downlink frequency which has been connected between this mobile terminal and base station so whenever the data will be transmitted from this mobile from this base station to mobile phone that is known as uplink frequency and when the data is transmitted from this mobile phone to uh, base station back that is known as downlink frequency so that is the case uh, now this is frequency division multiplexing in this case two set of frequencies are required that is f1 and f2 one is used for uplink another is used for the downlink purpose so that is the case for fdd and tdd now in fdd mode there are two frequencies and in TDD only one frequency is used both uh, for both uplink and downlink but the frequency is divided in time slots for uplink and downlink. So whatever frequency that you are assigning for the purpose of TDD that is time division duplexing that same frequency will be used for both the cases for uplink and downlink and also uh, it is divided in time. So that means that the rate of transmission or the amount of information that you are transmitting is restricted uh, for uh, in terms of time and uh, in terms of slot also next one is UTRAN UTRAN now UMTS uh, terrestrial radio access network has two elements first one is RNC and node B now, what is RNC RNC is nothing it is a radio network uh, server now UTRAN is subdivided into individual radio network where each RNS is controlled by RNC that is the radio network controller now RNC is connected to a set of node B elements each of which can serve one or several cells now you can see that this is a core network this is UTRAN this is user equipment now in this user equipment there is a mobile phone and a sim card which is attached to this user equipment there is a UTRAN in this case there are different nodes which are connected to this mobile phone and there is a radio network controller so more than one node is connected to this radio controller and more than one radio uh, network controller is connected to msc sg sn hlr that is home location register authentication sector and this is connected to internet and pstn or isdn so that is the utran now next is the core network the umts core network may be split into two different areas like first one is circuit switched element another will be the packet switched element so these two uh, switching elements are uh, used to connect uh, the system in a particular network like uh, it will going to carry the data in a circuit uh, switched manner that is 
permanent channel for the duration of the call. In case of this packet switched element, it will going to carry the packet data. This enables much higher network usage as the capacity can be shared and data is carried as packet uh, which can be routed according to their destination. So, that is the main concept behind this packet switched element. Now, this is the explanation of core network. There is an MSC and a gateway MSC is there that is GMSC. More than one MSC is connected to single uh, gateway MSC that is GMSC. So, in this case MSC an exchange performing all the switching and signaling function is there. So, it will going to function call management, mobility management is there, subscriber administration, maintenance of charging the data is there, now supplementary call services is there. So, gateway MSC it will going to provide provide interconnection between the UMTS core network and external PSTN or ISTN network is there. So, that is the main concept behind this gateway MSC. Now, next will be the core network. Now, it will going to allow this packet switched element. Now, the, this packet switched elements of 3G UMTS core network architecture include these uh, following entities like first one is the serving GPRS support node that is SGSN. Second one is the gateway GPRS support node that is GGSN. It has central element in UMTS and it handles the interworking between the UMTS packet switch network and external packet switch network. So, that is the main concept behind this uh, packet switched network. Now, these are some of the interfaces in UMTS. So, there are four major new interfaces. Uh, these are defined in UMTS like first one is LU, then LUR, LUB and UU that is uh, these are the interfaces that you have uh, seen in the UMTS diagram. So, this is the interface between UTRAN and the CN. The interface between the different RNCs are there like the radio network controllers. The interface between node B and the RNC is there and here uh, the ear, ear interface will be there that is denoted by this UU. Now, UMTS handover types are there. So, there are different types of handover uh, types are there like first one is the hard handoff, soft handoff, software handoff, UMTS, GSM, inter. Uh, RAT handover is there. So, in case of this hard handover, this form of handover is essentially the same as that used for 2G networks where one link is broken and other will be established. So, which means it will going to uh, break the link before it will going to establish another link. Another will be the soft handover where this will form uh, of handover is much gradual and user equipment communicate simultaneously with more than one node B or base station during the handover process, which means it is much uh, different as compared to the hard handover. Next one is the softer handover, which is not a full form of UE, UMTS handover, but the UE communicates with more than one sector managed by the same node B. UMTS GSM inter rat uh, handover, this form of handover occurs when mobile uh, have to change between the radio access technology that is RAT. So, this is all about today's lecture where we have discussed WLL and UMTS in detail. Thank you.